Some say growing old is like a journey, except that nobody is in a hurry to reach the end. There inevitably comes a point when we realize we no longer have most of our life before us. The daily routine becomes more routine and opportunities dwindle away. Of course, life has its limitations, but you can make use of your psychological potential until you're 100. Professor Ernst Purple practices what he preaches. At 72, this renowned brain researcher is officially retired, but last year he launched projects in China, Singapore and Russia. He doesn't see aging as a curse, but as yet another opportunity. The human body may decline, but as long as the brain stays healthy, it hardly ages at all. An MRI scan reveals very little difference between a young and an old brain. There's simply no such thing as an age limit after which brain cells start dying off. It's not really so much a matter of the quantity, but of the quality of the information processing within the nerve cells. Many studies have shown that we can still learn at an advanced age and can start new things. There are many examples of older people as sharp as ever. At age 94, former Chancellor Helmut Schmidt is still a brilliant speaker. George Friedrich Handel was 57 when he composed his Messiah, and Goethe completed his epic drama Faust when he was 68. Even so, many people are afraid they won't be able to keep up with the hectic pace of modern life in their later years. Indeed, starting at age 35, our ability to retain detailed information, like telephone numbers, starts to fade. But that doesn't mean everything else does. A long-term study of 6,000 subjects in the United States indicated that vocabulary, verbal memory, and spatial reasoning reach their zenith between the ages of 40 and 56. The ability to make connections even increases with age. Ernst Pöppel's explanation for these trends is that brain cells are not always equally responsive. High and low responsiveness vary in a 30 to 40 millisecond cycle. We perceive the stimuli we take in during this phase as occurring simultaneously. For older people, these phases can last longer, so they may be slower to react, but they can take in and sort more information at once than younger people. The theory goes that this allows them to think more analytically and form a better overall picture, even if they can't store individual facts as well as they used to. Forgetting is actually a creative garbage disposal of information I don't need, and that's a crucial point. When I get older, if I've used my brain all my life, I might be far more creative, because anything that's had meaning can be put together in meaningful contexts. But to stay fit, the brain has to be exercised, like a muscle. By itself, working crossword puzzles only improves factual knowledge. But whatever poses active challenges and can be applied to many aspects of life and touches our emotions will activate the brain on all levels. High intensity exercise helps as does playing music or taking up a new sport or memorizing poems. The heart must submit itself courageously to life's call without a hint of grief. A magic dwells in each beginning, protecting us, telling us how to live. You learn new things because of what they mean. Life situations are couched in poetry that very frequently you experience yourself. Sadness, joy, pain, and then you don't feel so lonely anymore. A study conducted over 80 years in the United States looked at what keeps body and soul active for the long haul. Researchers in California observed more than 1,500 people and discovered that many seemingly established truisms about living a long, healthy life needed to be revised. Among them was the idea that genes influence how long people live. 
In fact, heredity is not as important as it was long thought to be. Only about one-third of the determinants of a long life are inherited. The rest come from a person's lifestyle, for example. Another myth is that happy people live longer. On the contrary, the study found optimists tend to take greater risks. Being conscientious, on the other hand, will improve your chances of living longer. People with self-discipline prefer stable, low-risk lifestyles and seem to enjoy higher levels of the neurotransmitter serotonin, which positively regulates not only their mood, but their eating and sleeping cycles, too. The study also cast doubt on the harm caused by stress. People who have fun at their jobs are relatively immune to stress. Those with successful careers live an average of five years longer than those without, even if they experience more stress. The study points to voluntary challenges as a way to keep young. That supports Ernst Pöppel's ideas. The new begin. The new beginning is what I believe everyone should go for. You don't get something for nothing. You can't sit down with the attitude, just let come what may. No, I have to live life myself. The journey may be an arduous one, full of obstacles and dead ends. But if we stand up to the challenges and keep looking for new ones, we have a good chance of staying young while growing old.